Maybe you're an experienced veteran in the world of email outreach, or perhaps you're viewing this video as a gateway into the skill. Regardless of your experience level in sending email sequences, I know that you are a third degree black belt in being a recipient. We all are. Open your email inbox on any given day and you probably have dozens of emails from companies, individuals, and brands seeking your attention and investment. Odds are there are emails you look forward to and ones that, well, not so much. I bring this up because we hear from a lot of recruiters that they just don't know where to start when it comes to drip campaigns and sequences. People feel overwhelmed and that's totally fair, but I try to remind them that they have a remarkable amount of experience with this kind of outreach from the other side. If you don't know where to start, I suggest thinking about a recent case where an email has helped you figure something out, enticed you to click on a link to explore something, confused you with unclear or incomplete information, or annoyed you endlessly. Chances are, with so many emails out there, all of these have happened in probably the last week or so. Everyone sending an email is trying to reach you. Some do it well, and some do it poorly. That's just the way it goes. So, how can you do it well? Sequences help. They provide senders the chance to take a second, third, or more crack at reaching out to candidates. By sending more than one email, you don't have to worry about one bad subject line or a hectic day for candidates you're connecting with. You can also try out new and varied ideas or CTAs, providing a more holistic approach to outreach than one email can normally manage. So, how do you create a successful sequence? So glad you asked. Timing is not just for drummers. Choosing when to send an email is important, and it gets more complicated when you're talking about automated sequences. With emails like these, you aren't pulling the trigger every time. You want to have a few days a week for a few hours a day that have been generally successful for email outreach. Check your data and ask your coworkers about theirs. It can really help establish a successful time sending pattern for your audiences. Another thing to consider is the schedule for the candidate in question. Do they work the night shift? Are they primarily on one particular coast? Do you know if they work weekends or weekdays? Try to think about the schedule of who you're trying to reach and cater your timing around the gaps that are free moments in their schedule. You may also find that a candidate read your email, was a little tied up at the moment, and never responded. A single email could be easily forgotten under a pile of new emails, so sequences can also be a good reminder. If you have a wacky idea or want to try a different time, remember, you can always test. How many emails should be in one sequence? That's a tough question and it can vary. However, HiReasy has gathered some intel to get you started. Plan on having sequences of three to five emails to start. This is another area you can test, but we found three to five is a bit of a sweet spot for most recruiters. Building a new sequence for every single campaign you run will be overwhelming. So before starting, think about the different types of campaigns you've run recently. What goes into a lot of those emails? What have candidates been responding to well? Build sequences that allow you to save time by creating small changes to personalize the outreach. This will make your campaigns a lot more scalable, so you can run multiple at once. And don't be shy about using variables to pitch in. Remember that testing is your friend. Try running two sequences with one email switched out, or maybe just one extra at the end. Remember to be curious about what works for your candidates. Testing a new email in a sequence helps you determine whether testing out a whole other style of outreach can work. And if it doesn't work, you've got some wiggle room because the sequence can also include some tried and true emails. Mix it all together and it really is the best of both worlds. Remember how we discussed bringing in your personality in the video about writing a good email body? That goes double for sequences. When you're crafting multiple emails, continue to pepper in language that shows the candidate that they're reading something written by a real person. It helps build trust, and why not start building a rapport with them now over email instead of waiting for the interview? Remember who you are addressing. Yes, each candidate is different, but it's also true that different types of candidates might have similar concerns to each other. Even if you're sending the email to many people, Try to think about the major joys and challenges of the candidate's industry. This sort of empathy and insight can help your messaging stand out. As we discussed in the body copy video, ensure you set expectations and meet them from the get-go. Candidates like to know where they are in the process and what you want from them. 
You want to ensure this is consistent with each email of your sequence. Don't create a bait and switch situation by fumbling the email order or messaging. Make sure you're double checking the campaign flow and have a couple of coworkers read it to make sure it all makes sense. Hot take number one, don't assume each candidate will read every email. Plan to strategize ways for your sequence to come off as conversational without truly depending on the previous emails. People are busy. They might not have had the time or inclination to open your last email, so make the present email count. Remember what we said about empathy? Care about your candidates and make sure they know it. Chances are, since you're a recruiter, you like people. It's okay to not only get down to business, but also to communicate care. If certain milestones or events are happening in the industry the candidate is in, it's okay to reach out and ask for their perspective. It shows that you're in the know and also makes candidates aware that you're curious about them as humans. Remember, they're not just an email on a spreadsheet. Do you have teammates that are killing it? Ask them to share email templates or a copy that resonates with candidates. You're a team. You should work together. Remember, it's easier to reach an island if there are multiple boats and bridges connected to it. Use the best content you have collectively created and cater it to the candidates you are responsible for attracting. Think through what your goals are. Where is your team taking hiring over the next three months? The next six? How about a year? Make sure these sequences align with your vision, which goes double for whatever you're testing. You can't capitalize on information that hasn't been gathered yet. And don't be afraid to get other teammates or your hiring manager in on the planning as well. The more you incorporate your future goals into the sequence you build now, the less work you leave for later. If your sequences align with your goals, then that means you can use them over and over again. Hot take number two, vision casting should start in your data. If you don't know how you are doing, how do you know how far you can go? If you don't know the standard benchmarks for yourself and your team, goal setting can be frustrating. It's like taking a drive in a new city without a GPS to guide you. Take the time to figure out how healthy your engagement is now. It will be much easier to set up measured, realistic goals when you have the info. And you'll find the more you know, the easier it is to develop new ideas and test. We're about to tell you what's next in this sequence of videos. A quiz. Best of luck.